Okay. So, people who were here yesterday, help us out. If we look at example four, this one has a pi halves in the front. Uh, somebody who was here yesterday, what is the normal period for a tangent graph? Pi. The normal period for a tangent graph is pi. So to figure out the period for this tangent graph, we're going to do pi divided by the b value. Okay. So we're going to do keep it, change it, flip it. So pi, multiplication problem, flip that, 2 over pi. So what is the period of this graph going to be? 2. The pi's are going to cancel. We're just going to get 2. So the period of this graph is 2. What is the frequency for this graph? Pi halves. OK. Uh, tangent graphs do not have amplitude, um, but this graph does not have a stretch factor. So it's still going to be just 1. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw my x-axis right in the middle. And I'll draw my y-axis right in the middle. Okay, uh, do you guys want to go by 4, 8, or 12? 4, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. With our stretch, uh, with no stretch, with it just being one, do we want to do one, two, three, four, or do we want to do one, two? One, two. Oh, keep in mind that we are shifting down one. Still want to do one, two? Okay. One, two, one, two. Okay. Uh, tangent graphs do not have a midline, but we're still going to draw in this part because it's still going to be kind of the middle of our graph, even though we won't call it a midline. So the definition of a midline, for people who were gone yesterday, the definition is it's the middle of the highest points of the graph and the lowest points of the graph. Um, and since um, tangents don't have those relative maximums and minimums since they go down forever and go up forever. Uh, that's why they don't have a midline. So it doesn't fit the definition, but it, we still have kind of a middle of the graph. Okay, so uh, people who were here yesterday, how do we draw the graph from here? Every two. So we put the points him, we start at zero and then we do it where all the periods of the graph are. So zero, two, four. So if the middle of our graph hadn't moved, then we would be drawing the x-intercepts, but the middle of our graph moved on this one. So they're not x-intercepts this time. But normally they would be x-intercepts, okay? And then once we draw all of those, what do we do? Uh huh. Yeah, so halfway in between all the points, we draw vertical asymptotes. Okay. Okay. And then what do we do from here? Mm -hmm. So halfway between the point and the asymptote, 
halfway between the point and the asymptote. So normally, if, the, if it was a positive tangent graph, normally it would go like this. It would, go, it would have a positive slant, but this is a negative tangent graph, so it's going to have a negative slant. And we're going to go halfway between the point and the asymptote. And how high up are we going to go? We're going to go 1 because this has a stretch of 1. Well, not a stretch. It just is up 1. So 1 is how many boxes based on our scale? Two boxes based on our scale. So from this point, I'm going to go up two boxes, and I'm going to be halfway in between the asymptote and this point. And then on the other side, I'm going to go halfway in between the point and the asymptote, and I'm going to go down one. And I'm going to do that for all of them. So between the point and the asymptote, I'm going to go up one on the left. Between the point and the asymptote, I'm going to go down one on the right. Up one on the left. Down one on the right. Up one on the left. Down one on the right. And then what tangent graphs do, if you look at the beginning of the notes, uh, so if we had spread it out a little bit more, what they do is they follow the asymptote on one side, they go through the points, and then they follow the asymptote on the other side. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow the asymptote, go through the points, follow the asymptote. Okay. So I can start, it's going to be easiest to start at the top probably, so I'm going to follow the asymptote and then go through the points, and then if I had more of the graph, I would follow the asymptote like that, but I don't have very much graph down here, so I'm going to kind of stop. So you follow the asymptote and then go through the points and go towards the other asymptote. Follow the asymptote, go through the points towards the other asymptote. Follow the asymptote, go through the points towards the other asymptote. There's our tangent graph. Okay. Now, the asymptote was exactly halfway in the middle from 0 to 2, so the asymptote right here is at x equals what? 1. Okay. So the asymptote was at x equals 1, and someone who was here yesterday tell me how far apart are the asymptotes? They're two apart. How do we know that they're two apart? Because why? The scale... More than the scale, how would we know? Are they going to be two apart for the next problem? No, it has to do with the, the period of the graph, okay? So whatever the period of the graph is, that's how far apart the asymptotes are going to be, okay? So for the vertical asymptotes, we're going to say the first vertical asymptote is 1, and then if you want to find more vertical asymptotes, you're going to add or subtract the period of the graph. So I'm going to say add or subtract 2 times k. k just means add or subtract multiples of 2, and that will give you more asymptotes. So 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, so that will give you more this direction. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, minus 2 is negative 3, minus 2 is negative 5, minus 2 is negative 7. That will give you more vertical asymptotes this direction. So this is how we write an answer that is repetitive, and there are infinitely many vertical asymptotes because this graph would keep going in both directions. So this is how we write it if we have infinitely many answers for this. Okay, let's try the next one. So this is when we're going to start having graphs that shift to the left or shift to the right.
So before I start writing down the other information, let's go ahead and factor the inside of the function to see how far the graph is going to shift. So what can I factor out? A pi, and if I factor out a pi, what is left over? X plus one fourth. Okay, minus one half on the end. All right, so the period of the graph is going to be what? Not two, not three halves. So a normal period for a tangent graph is pi. We're doing pi divided by the b value, so pi divided by pi is just one. Yeah, so the period of the graph is one. The frequency of the graph is pi. Okay, so I'm going to draw my x-axis. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right in the middle. My y-axis, okay. So for the period of one, would you guys like to do four boxes, eight boxes, or 12 boxes? Four, okay. One, two, three, four. And four boxes works really well because we're gonna be shifting this to the left one fourth. And so four boxes will make that really easy. So one, one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. Okay, uh, so the middle of the graph is going to be negative one half, and then we have a stretch of three halves. So do we want to do one, two, three, four, or do we want to do one, two? One, two. So one, two will make it pretty easy to shift everything down one half to put the middle of the graph at negative one half, and it'll still make it pretty easy to have that vertical stretch of three halves, or that vertical stretch of 1.5. So I'm gonna put my dotted line down here to show that this is the middle of my graph. Not the midline, because tangent graphs don't have a midline, but it's still gonna be the middle of my graph. Okay, so what should I do now? Before the asymptotes. I gotta put my points. So I'm gonna start, before I move them to the left or the right, I'm gonna start with a point here at zero and where else am I gonna put a point? At one, okay. Now, how, I'm not gonna put all my points down because that would be annoying to move. So I'm gonna just put the first two. What am I gonna do with these first two points? I'm gonna move them to the left, how many boxes? One box, okay? So I know that my points, to get the period in there correctly, the points need to be four boxes apart. I'm gonna move them each to the left one box to get that horizontal shift, that phase shift. I'm gonna X spine out, but if you want to erase yours, that's totally fine, okay? So I'm gonna keep drawing my points in there and I'm just gonna make sure that they're still four boxes apart. Okay, um, and now what do I do since I have all my points drawn? Now I can put the asymptotes and how do I place them? In the middle of the points, okay. So four boxes, so two boxes, two boxes,
Okay. Um, now, this tangent graph has a positive slope, so we know that it's going to kind of it's going to go this direction instead of the the way that the previous problem went. And we are doing an amplitude, well, not an amplitude, we're doing a vertical stretch of three halves. So how many boxes do we go? Three boxes. One and a half would be three boxes in this case. So between the these two points, we're going to go up three boxes. In between these points, we're going to go down three boxes. So up three boxes, down three boxes. Up three boxes, down three boxes. And then we make sure that when we draw it, we keep in mind that we're starting along the asymptote, crossing through the points, going towards the other asymptote. So it would look something like that. My point, it really shouldn't be that straight, but these really mess with my brain. My brain has a hard time with these. Maybe this way will be easier for me. <laughs> it's like almost a cubic shape, but not quite. I don't know. Okay. There we go. Like, what? Ooh, that one was better. This one was my best one so far. Thank you. Oh, that was not as good. Uh... Okay. Trying is the important part, right? Okay. You just have to be careful not to make them look like straight lines because they're not straight lines. Even though this is the same slope, it's not a slope, it's a curved line. So that's the thing you have to be careful of, is that they shouldn't look straight. Okay, let's try the next one. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I fill out the information is I'm going to factor the inside. So what should I be taking out? Two. And what does that leave me with? X. Oh, we didn't write the vertical asymptote. Sorry, sorry. That was my fault. Okay. Um, so this was a one right here. The vertical asymptote would be X equals one fourth. And then how far apart are the vertical asymptotes? They're a distance of one apart. So I'm going to say x equals one fourth plus or minus what? One k, or you can just write k. Um, so it's always going to be like in the parentheses, like you know how we try to find it and we put one minus five or whatever. Like I can just look at that and automatically tell it to be the number of questions. What part are you talking about? This part right here. Um, not necessarily. Did that work last time? It doesn't, it didn't work here though, because the number in the parentheses would have been zero. So I wouldn't do that. I would actually look. Yeah. It works for the, for number six. So it works for the ship, the ones that shift. Okay. Uh, so what's the period of this graph? Pi halves. Oh, we didn't figure out what this was. Oh, when we take out the two, what is it? Pi fourths. Everyone understand that? Pi fourths? So if you do pi halves and you divide out a two because you're factoring out a two, so you're dividing a two to the front, it would be pi fourths. 
Okay, what is the frequency? Two. So that means that there's going to be two of the curves from zero to pi, which makes sense. If the period is pi halves, there's going to be two of the curves from zero to pi. Um, we're going to be shifting this up one. The middle of the graph is going to be at one, and we're going to have um, just a normal one for the graph. So the middle is going to work just fine. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to do fours, eights, or twelve boxes? Four, eight, or twelve? Four. We don't want to have any wide graphs today. So do we want to do, and actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a um, unilateral decision. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. even though we could do just one, two. And just so you guys can see the difference in how this makes the drawing feel, if you have your scale be smaller instead of bigger. So we're going to do one, two, three, four this time, just so we can see the difference. Okay. So the middle of our graph is at 1, so I'm going to put it up here at 1. And then what are we going to do? Put our points. Where do we put our points? So 0 and pi halves, okay. And then... Since the graph shifts to the right, where are we moving them? One box, two boxes, two boxes. So pi halves is right here. Pi fourths would be exactly in the middle. So we're going to shift them two boxes left or right? To the right because it's a minus. So two boxes to the right, two boxes to the right. So the points are four boxes apart. <clears throat> Doesn't work? Okay. Um, okay, and then what do we do once we have the points down? Asymptotes. And where do we put the asymptotes? Right in the middle. Okay, uh, this graph is negative, and we're doing one. So what should I do from the point? Go down which way? To the right. To the right. Okay, so I'm going to go down one to the right. And because of my scale, it's really only one box. And then go up one to the left. So down one to the right, up one to the left. Okay, so we're going to go from asymptote to asymptote. And these are so much easier to draw. You might want to 
change your scales now after you try drawing these? Do you guys see how it's so much easier to draw them as curves now? Yeah. Okay. So where is the vertical asymptote? Pi halves. And you could say, um, it would not be wrong if you said zero. So there's, depending on how somebody sees the graph, their starting vertical asymptote could be in multiple different places and it's fine for people to have different answers since there's lots of vertical asymptotes here. So pi halves is what I see, and then um, how am I going to write out my equation for all of the vertical asymptotes? Okay, pi halves plus or minus uh, pi halves k. So because the period is pi halves, so the asymptotes are a width of pi halves from each other. So all I have to do is find one to start with, and then the period is how far apart they are from then on. You also could have written x equals zero plus or minus pi halves k, because there was one at zero right here. So you could have noticed that. So the starting one doesn't really matter. The important part is that you notice how far apart they are. Yeah. Any of the asymptotes are fine. In fact, if you wanted to like make me think, if you're like, I feel salty with Miss Rice because she glared at me or something in the hallway, you could like choose one that's like way off the graph and make me do the math to figure it out, to figure out if it's a real asymptote or not. Um, but the important part is the pi halves k. Yeah. So if you did like, you could say even x equals like negative 13 pi halves plus pi halves k, and you would still get it right because negative 13 pi halves is technically one of the asymptotes. It's just way not on this graph. Yeah. Delina, did you have another question? Uh, oh, so it's just pretty much the period every time? It's kind of the period, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. the, since the, the period helps us graph those points, and then since the asymptote is in the middle of those points, it ends up being the exact same amount. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's try the next one. So we're going to factor the inside. And what do we get when we factor the inside? Okay. Pi over six, okay. And then what do we have on the end? Plus two, okay. So what is the period of the graph? Not, not pi thirds, yeah, so we're gonna, so remember it's always from the two. So we're not gonna use this, we're gonna use this. So pi divided by two, so it's pi halves. The frequency of the graph is two. So from zero to pi, we're gonna see two um, of the curves of the graph, okay? Uh, this graph has a vertical stretch of two and the middle of the graph is two, so um, do you guys want to draw, we can draw the line in the middle or we could move the line down if we want. What do you guys want to do? Draw the x-axis in the middle or do we want to move it down? Move it down? Okay. So I'm going to move it down just a couple spaces. I'm going to draw it down here. Um, moving it down just so that we have space to shift it up to and then still vertically stretch it by two. And we could have still drawn it if we didn't do that, um, but I think maybe because we learned last time that it's easier to draw these if we don't have them as stretched out, it's kind of nice maybe if we shift it down a little bit. Yeah, okay. So this is what we have. Now uh, the period of the graph is pi halves and we're going to be shifting it um, pi six, so we have to be really careful about how our fractions work. So um, 
if we wanted to think of pi halves in terms of six, this is three pi six, okay. So if I'm gonna do this, um, if I have four boxes, uh, eight boxes or 12 boxes, I'd go 12 boxes maybe so that I can shift this to the right pi six and have that be easy. Does that make sense? If four boxes, eight boxes and 12 boxes are my option, I'm probably gonna go 12 boxes. Everyone understand why we're doing that? Okay, so, um, and you could maybe, instead of doing 12 boxes for pi halves, you could maybe do something like uh, 12 boxes for pi, all of pi. Does that make sense? 12 boxes for all of pi? Do we understand how that would work? Yeah, we could try that, but then that would be kind of doing Let's just do 12 boxes for pi halves so we're staying consistent. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is pi halves. And I'm just gonna write a little reminder to myself that this is three pi over six. In terms of pi six, yeah. So if 12 boxes is three six, what's 12 divided by three? Four. four. So one, two, three, four would be one pi six. One, two, three, four would be two pi six, so pi thirds, which is two pi six. So if I know that I'm gonna be shifting my graph in terms of six, then I'm gonna be writing my fractions in terms of six so that it's a little bit easier for me to shift. Does that make sense? So because of our scale, because we're doing pi halves wide, this is gonna be a very wide graph, okay? We're gonna have this little graph right here that looks like this, and it's gonna be this wide. Just a heads up on that, it's gonna be a very wide graph. Okay, oh, it froze. My fingers are right here, not on the screen. Okay, so let me get this, hold on, let me get this off.